Hi guys, so before I start this video, I just wanted to say that I really hope that you and your families are safe and healthy. I have been really unsure about if I should make this video or not. This video is about how Iceland is coping with the COVID-19. I have never in my life gotten so many messages from people asking me to do a video on a specific topic. So I am doing this to be informative. However, this video is going to be in two different parts. So part one of this video will be very based around fact and just general information from the Icelandic government. And the second part of this video will be a little bit more personal, how I am handling the situation and just some advice. However, before I start this video, we do have a sponsor, which I feel like is the perfect sponsor for this video. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community and they have thousands of awesome inspirational classes. Their classes are so creative, like they have classes about everything. And this is honestly the best time ever to pick up a new skill and be creative. Like I've been painting and knitting <laughs> and doing stuff that I haven't done in years. So the course that I am taking is called iPhone filmmaking, creating cinematic video with your phone. The class is taught by Caleb Babcock and Niels Gray. I really hope that I am pronouncing that correctly. If not, I am so sorry. Basically, they are teaching you how to create really awesome cinematic videos with your iPhone. I vlog a lot with my phone, but I have never really known how to make my vlogs aesthetically pleasing. So in this class, you learn a lot about like methods and uh, they tell you about like the gear that you can use like tripods and lenses and so yeah that was super helpful that course will come in very handy for me during this summer because i plan on traveling around the country a lot and i do want to make a lot of vlogs and show you guys the nature skillshare has so many courses they have like super chill drawing courses and like, journaling courses that are really helpful with like mindfulness which is something that a lot of people really need right now so i definitely recommend those so skillshare is giving away two free months of skillshare premium membership if you click the link below the first 1000 people who click the link actually get yeah two free months and after that it's only about ten dollars per month which is not a lot especially for what you are getting big thank you to skillshare for um sponsoring this video now let's get to the actual video. So before I actually start, uh, I do want to say that I am not bashing other countries. I am not trying to compare Iceland to other countries. I am simply stating facts and saying how Iceland is handling the situation. So to begin, I want to go over um, the like main timeline of everything. So obviously I watch everything and you know keep up with the news in Icelandic. So I have no idea how to say all of these words in English. So basically the chief epidemiologist ah oh, i'm really about to make a fool of myself basically his name is thorolver gunnason and what thorolver did um according to an interview that i listened to is that he was very aware of the outbreak in china and in january he actually ordered some tests to iceland he picked up on the seriousness of this situation very quick. So on February 27th, the first daily press conference started um, and there have been daily press conferences in Iceland, uh, which are attended by the chief epidemiologist, <laughs> aka Thorolver, and the director of health, her name is Alma Muller, and the chief of civil protection and emergency management, who is called Vidir Reynison. So the 28th of February, the first case of COVID-19 was confirmed in Iceland. A question that I get a lot is how did COVID-19 reach Iceland since we are a isolated island? First of all, we have a lot of tourists coming here who may have been infected. More importantly, we had a lot of Icelandic people who were traveling, for example, in Italy. Then they came 
back infected and that's how the virus actually started here by the way i completely forgot to mention this all of the information that i am getting is coming from a website called covid.is every information and data that you need about the situation in iceland is on there so that website is just spot on and everything that i'm saying comes directly from that website. On March 6th, uh, the first two transmitters within Iceland confirmed traced to infected individuals who had recently traveled to Northern Italy. I'm like not in focus at all. March 13, screening for the virus that causes COVID-19 starts among the general public. A ban on gatherings of more than 100 people, upper secondary schools and university were closed. So on March 19th, all Icelandic citizens and residents in Iceland arriving from abroad must earn to go self-quarantine for 14 days. This step was a very important step. Um, I feel like maybe it could have been taken a lot sooner. That's just my opinion. On March 22nd, the Minister of Health announced a further restriction, limiting on gatherings to 20 people or less. So sports clubs, hair salons, gyms, like everything was shut down. And also people have to keep a two meter distance from each other. However, grocery stores and pharmacies could have up to 100 customers at a time. So on March 24th, the General Hospital announced the first death of a patient diagnosed with COVID-19. The ban of gatherings was supposed to end on April 13th, but it was prolonged till May the 4th, 3rd of May today. So tomorrow the ban is not as restricted. Schools are about to open, but like gyms and swimming pools and stuff are obviously still closed. You are allowed to go outside. And I've said this in my Instagram story, like I am so sorry if you are stuck at home and if you cannot leave your house or even go outside i am so sorry so i'm going to be going over some numbers and these numbers um are accurate whilst i'm filming this it is 3 p.m on may the 3rd so there have been 1799 confirmed infections and 1717 people have recovered there are currently 72 people in isolation 577 people are in quarantine and four are being hospitalized there have been 19253 people who have completed quarantine there are zero people in intensive care right now which is great news there have been 50,406 samples been taken unfortunately 10 people in Iceland have lost their lives due to COVID-19. So next I'm going to be reading something from the genetic engineering and biotechnology news. This was an interview with Kaude Stefansson, who is the co-founder and CEO of Decode Genetics. So there have been more tests taken in Iceland than any other country in the world um, per capita. So Decode started testing high-risk people and who were returning to Iceland from countries or regions that were classified as high risks or who had been in contact with infected people. A separate group of the general population was also tested and that started on March 13th. So they used two strategies. They had a open invitation um, tested and then there were random invitation. This is what Kaure Stefansson, the CEO, says about Iceland's response. What is different about Iceland's response to COVID-19 is both that they started screening very, very early and that they were testing the general population in addition to people at high risk. Combination of broad-based screening, vigorous tracking of contacts of the infected seem to have brought this epidemic under some sort of control. So that is basically all of the data that I have about the situation. There have been a lot of articles about how Iceland is handling the situation and people are saying that Iceland is actually handling this very well, which I do agree with. I feel very safe here and the healthcare 
everyone who works in the healthcare system is just amazing here in Iceland. I know that if you do get infected and if you're staying at home, there are healthcare workers. I think there are nurses or doctors who call you three times a day to check on you and check if everything is all right. So yeah, I am very thankful to the people in the front lines, uh, Vider, Alma and Thorolur are doing amazing things, keeping everyone informed, doing these daily like daily conference calls or whatever you call them. These three people especially have been keeping everything like calm and collected. So yeah, massive thank you to Vidir Thorubur and Alma. Now let's talk about my feelings and my thoughts uh, and this video on a positive note. I could sit here and talk about the negative thing, but you know, if you're healthy, if if you're stuck at home and if you're bored, then be thankful because at least you're healthy. Yeah, that's all I have to say now. Um, positive things. Number one, I am improving a lot in things that I wouldn't have been improving in if it wasn't for this situation. And uh, number one being push-ups, <laughs> which sounds very silly, but push-ups is one of my biggest weaknesses in CrossFit. I was able to do maybe two or three push-ups in a row before everything started. Um, now I am up to nine push-ups in a row, which is awesome. I am super proud of that. Um, also running. Yeah, I wouldn't have been doing that if it weren't for like my gym being closed. <laughs> at least I'm getting better at something, like I'm not sitting around doing nothing. So yeah, super happy and proud of myself uh, for improving. I have been reading a lot more than I would have been. Uh, I actually reorganized my closet, which is something that I did out of pure boredom. <laughs> Another thing that I'm super happy about and something that I would have never done if it wasn't for this situation is that I have been posting my workouts on my Instagram story. Um, I'm very insecure. I hate showing my body. I'm very insecure about everything about me. <laughs> I don't know. It was really, really hard for me to post the first workout. Um, but now I kind of look at it as, okay, I'm posting my workout on Instagram because other people are going to see it and they're going to be motivated and inspired. And yeah, that is basically what I am doing by posting my workouts. It's scary and a lot of people have a lot of things to say about my body and my technique. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's helping some people and that is worth it. I'm not like saying that everyone should be working out and like being fitness gurus. <laughs> um, I just, I really like working out. If you know me, then you know that I am obsessed with CrossFit and everything fitness related. So also I am working on my bachelor thesis and I am graduating in June. I don't know if there will be a ceremony, but at least I am graduating. Um, yeah <laughs> yeah i've basically just been working out on my balcony i've been um, studying every day i'm getting kind of tired but you know uh, i hand in my bachelor thesis on the 22nd of may for those who didn't know i am getting my bachelor's degree in uh, literature and creative writing um yeah get asked about that every single day <laughs> on my instagram <sighs> i feel good about um, ending this video on a positive note. This is a tough time for us all, so be kind, spread positivity in any way that you can. Again, thank you so much to Skillshare. Please check them out and click the link down below. First 1,000 people will get two months free Skillshare premium membership. So thank you guys for watching. I really hope that this video answered some of your questions about uh, how Iceland is handling. So I am finally going to end this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be safe, be healthy, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.